traffic and all. So let's jump on. So what did we discuss in our last class? Auto scaling. Auto scaling and load balancer. Okay, so in auto scaling, we have learned about uh, <clears throat> yes, auto scaling meaning scale out and then scale in, and then uh, we discuss about minimum, maximum, and desired capacities. Yes, and also we discussed about uh, yes, different types of scaling options. So what are those? Manual scaling. Schedule scaling and then dynamic scaling. And then also we have learned about launch templates. Correct? We have learned about launch templates. And then we discuss about the load balancer. So load balancer, what is ELB? ELB will distribute the traffic to the multiple EC2 instances across available zones. Fantastic. Okay. And then... Um, And then does the ELB has, uh, okay, how do we access ELB? Using the URL or the DNS name. Is it possible to log into the ELB? No, you can only access it. So does the ELB has IP addresses? It has an IP addresses, but those IP addresses are static or dynamic? Dynamic. Those are dynamic. So, is it recommended to access your load balancer using the DNS name or the IP address? DNS name. What are the different types of load balancers we have? Application load balancer, network load balancer, classic load balancer, gateway load balancer. Fantastic. Which is the load balancer which we should be using it? Application load balancer. Application load balancer support uh, what protocols? HTTP and HTTPS. Very good. And uh, which one is the default choose load balancer? Application only. If you want to have an extreme high performance network load balancer. And then uh, this network load balancer support the static IPs. How many per availability zone? One per availability zone. And then which protocols that you support NLB? NLB supports which protocol? TCP and then UDP. TCP and UDP. Very good. And then uh, gateway load balancer support what protocol? Gateway protocol. And then in application load balancer, we learned about routing features. Correct? Host-based routing, path-based routing, string-based routing and all. And do you remember when we creating application load balancer or load balancer? So we need to create target groups, correct? Can we create target groups? What does the target groups contain? Targets. Targets is nothing but EC2 instances. Can we create rules in a load balancer? Yes. Load balancer will be listening on which protocols? Generally, load balancer listen on which protocol? HTTP and HTTPS. HTTP and HTTPS. Which one is secure? HTTPS. Okay. Super as usual. So let's jump on to next topic. Can you please confirm? Can you see my screen and can you hear me well? Okay, today let's talk about types of IPs. Or is that types of IPs? So we have different types of IP addresses. What are those? We have different types of IP addresses. Mainly we have three types of IP addresses. Chitty. Mainly we have three types of IP addresses. What are those? Public IP address, private IP address, <laughs> hybrid. Uh, what you went for uh, where? 
what was that deployment models huh? public private hybrid huh? okay man that was a joke for me <laughs> nice okay so no so we have three types of ip addresses one is public ip addresses private ip address and elastic ip what is that so that we'll be talking about okay public ip address private ip address and elastic ip address in shortcut we call it as eip what is that elastic ip eip okay so so before i talk about that so let us representally i'll show you what are these ip addresses about so i assume this is aws so this is aws so you have your laptop here correct and from your laptop okay this is your laptop from laptop you are connecting to the aws correct yes how are we connecting from your laptop to aws using internet yes or no using internet so we need to have internet this is your laptop okay now i went and launched one ec2 instance inside this aws i went and launched one ec2 instance inside this aws guys okay i went along so whenever you launch an ec2 instance automatically you'll get an ip address to the ec2 instance yes that ip address will be provided by whom aws so that ip address is provided by aws and the default ip address that you get for aw for the ec2 instance is private ip which ip so whenever you launch the ec2 instance which is ip address that mandatory that will be you will get it private ip so remember that is the private ip so can i say that definitely you will get the private ip by default yes so you will get by default you will get by default so can i say it is mandatory to have the private ip yes it is mandatory to have the ip private ip address and i would say it is mandatory okay now you tell me from this ec2 from this laptop can you log into this ec2 is can you access the ec2 instance using the private ip hmm? so your laptop is in internet yes or no and ec2 has what type of ip it has private ip can you connect to the private ip directly from internet that is what i'm asking so you have the laptop from your laptop directly can you access ec2 instance private ip can you connect to the ec2 instance with the private ip no answer is no so you cannot connect it so now you tell me which is the ip address that i need to assign to the ec2 instance in order to connect from the my laptop uh what is that public ip you need to assign so here you have public ip okay this is a public ip so private ip is mandatory correct public ip is mandatory answer is no public ip address is not mandatory if at all you want to connect from the internet guys if at all you want to connect from the internet to your ec2 instances then you need to have the public ip so it is not mandatory it is optional what is that it is optional and <clears throat> the problem with this public ip is let's say you have assigned the public ip guys you need to just select you want public ip yes or no enable or disable which one we need to do enable it who will assign the public ip aws will assign the public ip okay now aws has has assigned the public ip let's let's say 1 2 3 4 for example the problem with the public ip is if you if you stop and start the ec2 instance what if you stop and start the ec2 instance ip address will change what is that the ip address will change if you stop and start the ec2 instance what will happen the ip address will change but <clears throat> sir i don't want to i don't want to get this ip address change so which i which I, which type of ip address is that you need to you need to assign elastic ip what is that 
elastic ip elastic ip public ip both are same both are the both are the both can be connected from internet but the only big difference is public ip is dynamic public ip is dynamic dynamic meaning if you stop and start the ec twins ip address will change but whereas elastic ip is it it is static what is that it is static so if you stop and start the ec2 instance if you stop and start the ec2 instance, ip will change ip will not ip will not change you got this difference so public ip is it dynamic or a static it is dynamic whereas you have elastic ip i call it as eip that is that is static you understood the big difference between this so these two are mandatory or optional uh, which one is mandatory to have private ip which are optional public ip or elastic ip see everything should be inside the vpc only you know okay now <clears throat> can from my laptop can i connect to this ec2 instance using the public ip now yes now now in what cases you need to use public ip in what cases you need to use elastic ip see now i am the customer i am the customer and you guys are aws engineer so i have asked you to set up one ec2 instance and give me the ip address i want to access it from internet what you do will you assign public ip or elastic ip elastic ip only no right why so if you use public ip what will happen it will always change public if you assign the public ip what will happen it will always change if you push start stop and start the ec2 instance ip address will change again you will say sir yes sir ip address has been changed please use this again someone stop and start again ip will change again you will send the mail to me i am the customer not your brother correct so for customer it is it has to be very good right so in this case which type of ip address that you will assign elastic ip address if you stop and start the ec2 instance ip will change no it will not change good so when to use private ip okay now i went and launched one more ec2 instance here so this ec2 instance will also has ip address wow is it is it this will also has the ip address now you tell me this two this two ec2 instance will talk to each other using what i what ip within the vpc within the vpc within the aws if two ec2 instances want to talk to each other which ip address will use it will use private ip public ip elastic ip ah huh? ah uh, it will use private only it will use private so private ip only is within the vpc if you want to connect it from internet from outside you need to go with the public ip or elastic ip clear ah okay so now the question here is let's say you are working in some company if you are working inside a company you will be public or private private only no your company network is a private network only no yes so i'll i'll put it here this is the company this is the company guys this is a company from the company from the company you need to connect to the aws correct chitty tell me will you be working from inside the company or will you be working from the internet somewhere inside the company only no will you be in internet will you go to internet cafe and connect to aws no eventually now now we are in which situation we are in internet only correct are we working for any company do we have any separate network no but if at all you are in a network if you are working inside a company from the company how do you connect to the aws so guys here we need to have something called vpn what is that vpn virtual private network everyone knows vpn correct do you know vpns okay so <clears throat> if you are working inside a company the company people will my company people might have already set up a network to the aws that is called vpn so for, if you are sitting here inside the company you will be connecting to the aws using the vpn so when you are connected to the when you are connecting to the vpn it is 
okay now you tell me okay now you tell me if you are connecting from company i want to connect to this ec2 instance okay do i need to come like this no 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 i need to can directly connect to this correct so this is my virtual private network that meaning the connection is private to private yes the connection is private to private can i connect directly to the ec2 instance using the private ip address yes because you are in the vpn you are in the vpn it's a private network if you have a private network can you connect to the private ip address answer is yes you got this differences between all these ip addresses and all now tell me for the ec2 instance you have the private ip yes or no mandatorily you have the private ip yes or no yes so with the private ip can you have eip also yes correct private ip is mandatory so you can have eip so can you have like this also with only public ip yes can you have is this possible to have like this last one answer is no the last one combination you cannot have is it possible to have elastic ip separate public ip separate for one ec2 instance no it is like having two names for you all right is it clear till here everyone understood clear up everyone so let's go and write yes so public ip so public ip private ip and then we have elastic ip okay so what is public ip can i say which can be accessed from internet which can be accessed from internet that is called public ip yes or no yes so public ip is mandatory or optional public ip is optional very good so public ip is static or dynamic public ip is dynamic very good so that meaning if you stop and start the ec2 instance what will happen if you stop and start the ec2 instance ip address change ip address will change so who will assign this public ip to ec2 instance aws aws assigns public ip to the ec2 instance it was okay so coming to the private ip private can be can be accessed from the internet no which cannot be accessed from internet so private ip is mandatory so private ip is mandatory private ip is mandatory so private ip address is mostly static or dynamic ah uh, private ip private ip is are mostly static it will not change it will not change so when where do you use this private ip can we say within the vpc yes or no so within the vpc and also and through vpn correct and through the vpn <clears throat> nice so coming to the elastic ip can i say it is same as public ip but eip is static eip is static so that meaning if we stop and start the ec2 instance what will happen if you stop and start the ec2 instance ip will huh i will not change i will not city aws are providing five eips are free how many are free remember no one generally will give the static ips they will charge you even your internet isp provider you have internet in your home no 
for your home for your laptop the ip address is static or dynamic it is dynamic only it will not be static for 2 3 days it will be there after that it will it will get the uh, change so if at all you want to have a static ip address you need to pay more to the isp provider in order to have the static ip correct so no one generally give the static ip it is very rare very scarcity you will have okay so but aws is giving how many are free five vips are free okay now you tell me you have you have got one elastic ip from aws will you keep it ideal if you keep it ideal so whenever you get an elastic ip you attach it to the ec2 instance you assign to the ec2 instance if you don't assign it and keep it ideal will it be for free aws will charge even though it is below 5 so the idea is don't keep it ideal if you have, if you got the elastic ip assign it to the ec2 instance don't keep it ideal so so eip has to be associated to the ec2 instance if you have not associated if you have if you have not associated or not used eip will be okay if you have not associated not used eip to any ec2 instance eip will will be charged so if those eips are below 5 also correct if those eips are below five also don't keep it ideal okay ideal eips are charged is it clear everyone is this clear till here everyone cc non it all good nice so now generally we might have heard this what is metadata what is metadata generally data about data right we have learned since the, since your childhood what is data data what is metadata data about data is called the metadata so here we have instance metadata what is instance metadata simple data about ec2 instance is called instance metadata so data about ec2 instance is called instance metadata so who has launched the ec2 instance when it has launched what type of volume it has which security group it attached which vpc it attached which subnet it is attached all the information we call it as metadata so from console you get you get this metadata from description not description they have changed from details section from which section that you get all the information of the ec2 instance details section what section is that details section so chitty if you want to get the information about the ec2 instance from cli from console from where do you get from details section from cli from cli you need to follow this below url there is one url that you need to access it this is pakka certification question this url http colon slash slash 169.254.169.254 slash latest slash meta minus data slash this is the url that we should be using it in the cli when we go to cli i'll show you this how to get the metadata but this i this url is perfect certification question so what is the url 169 say tell with me say with me 169.254 169.254 slash latest slash meta minus data one more 169.254 169.254 slash latest slash meta minus data so 
remember sometimes they will remove the minus there sometimes they will put metadata first and latest less last they will change these ip addresses but don't get confused it is 169.254 169.254 latest slash meta minus data okay now we have learned about instance metadata now let's talk about something called user data what is that user data generally the name itself is saying who should who will be providing this data user user meaning whom we only right so we need to provide the data so here let me give an example <clears throat> you you are launching one ec2 instance and i told you to install let's say apache i want you to i want you to install apache so what you want to do what you will do you launch a ec2 instance you will log into the ec2 instance and then you download the apache and then you install it correct this is how you will be doing it but smart people what they do is okay now you want to install this for, for 20 machines will you install uh, this apache for all 20 machines one by one one by one how much time will it take it will take a lot of time so what you can do is you can write a nice shell script what script shell script you write a small shell script and put it in user data how many steps are there to launch an ec2 instance seven step in one of the step it is it will ask for user data hey babu do we have any user data that meaning the script what does the script contains to install tomcat to install tomcat to create some directories to install patches to install something right you create some small script and put it in user data and then boom launch the machine when you launch it what will happen automatically this script will also get executed in the boot time itself by the time the machine is ready your apache is ready you want to install it manually no you understood this is called bootstrap scripting what is that bootstrap scripting so you are the script will be executed at what time boot time your script will be executed at the boot time the script which you have provided will run at the boot time of the ec2 instance and also remember now let's say you, one ec2 instance you have launched with user data one ec2 instance you have launched with user data you have installed apache will you will you run the same user data again no no so remember this user data will be executed only for the first time only because how how is it possible to install apache again and again whenever you run the machine no so remember this is also a certification question user data run user data will run only for the for the first time of launching the ec2 instance and if it is a linux machine what is the script that you use shell script if it is windows machine uh powershell or is that powershell clear any questions still here is it clear till here everyone okay nice so do we need to worry about uh, the shell scripting and power scripting power shell scripting <laughs> don't worry about it so if at all you want to learn little bit of automation you can use it but i'll be giving one example of shell script don't worry so right so i in the lab we'll use some shell, shell script yes this data will be saved yes check this in the user data the data will be saved okay so now guys how many steps are there to launch an ec2 instance 
సిన్స్ డే వన్ ఐ వాజ్ సేయింగ్ సెవెన్ స్టెప్స్ సెవెన్ స్టెప్స్ నౌ లెట్ సి వాట్ ఆర్ దోస్ సెవెన్ స్టెప్స్ రైట్ సో ఐ పుట్ ఇట్ ఇన్ యువర్ బ్రెయిన్ ఆన్ ద వెరీ ఫస్ట్ డే how many steps are there to launch is it means seven since whenever i ask this question fatak you will say seven step but do you know what are the seven seven steps not no right okay now let me put all these things whether we have learned this learned the seven steps or not ha huh? let's see so whenever you are launching the ec2 instance chite whenever you are launching the ec2 instance okay i'll put the heading the seven steps ha huh? <laughs> ఏడు మెట్లు ఏడు అడుగులు ఓకే ద సెవెన్ స్టెప్స్ దర్ ఇస్ దట్ ఈస్ నాట్ ఫ్యాన్సీ టెక్నికల్ వర్డ్ ఐఎమ్ జస్ట్ పుట్టింగ్ ద సెవెన్ స్టెప్స్ ఓకే సి ద ఫస్ట్ స్టెప్ ఈస్ వెన్ యు ఆర్ లాంచింగ్ ద ఈసీ టూ ఇన్స్టెన్స్ ద ఫస్ట్ స్టెప్ ఈస్ యూ నీడ్ టు సెలెక్ట్ ఏఎంఐ చిటి వాట్ ఈస్ ఏఎంఐ అమెజాన్ మెషిన్ ఇమేజ్ దట్ ఈస్ ఫుల్ ఫామ్ వాట్ వాట్ ఈస్ ఏఎంఐ copy of the operating system what is that copy of the operating system do you remember aws providing predefined images aws is providing linux images windows images red hat ubuntu suse and all these things so do you remember aws is providing a plain os also and aws is providing os with applications also correct can we create our own images also what are those images called custom mi what are those images called custom mi mi so in order to launch an ec2 instance you need to have operating system right for that you need to select the ami so ami will be provided by whom here aws itself so first thing is you need to select the ami so either you can select linux ami or you need to select windows ami <clears throat> chitte <laughs> there are so many ams available from uh, aws will, will make us available correct there are so many ams will be there no Amazon Linux is there, Ubuntu is there, Red Hat is there, CentOS is there, SUSE is there, right? Mac OS is there. So there are so many operating systems which is provided by AWS. But in our course, in our course, we need to select one AMI, correct? Will you select this and that? So what do we do is, let us set a benchmark. Let us have a rule. that whenever you are launching the ec2 instance which flavor that you launch is red hat which one so please whenever you are launching it well, let's launch red hat only guys because red hat is the most common operating system in uh, companies we use will you go and launch centos also yes go and launch but some some images are free some images are paid for that reason for sugar patients especially so they will go here and there they click something else unnecessarily right so let's have a rule that we will go and launch only which type red hat operating system only okay ma so for windows there will be a windows server there will be a windows server 2022 will be there we will go and launch that that flavor okay ma that is select ami that is first step and what is the second step the second step is select instance type what is that you tell me which is the instance type that we should be selecting it t2 micro, uh, t2 micro. that is a instance type and then we need to give the instance configuration configuration instance configuration meaning so basically how many instances that you need uh how many instances that you want to launch right and then you want public ip address or not uh and then uh, you want to put the user data or not right all the information all configurations will come in this step instance configuration and then next step is we need to select storage storage meaning here what volumes excellent you will get a what volumes are those ebs volumes fantastic ebs volume what is the default volume that you get huh? what is the different volume type you get ah what is that root volume so we'll get a, by default root volume we'll get it no what does the root volume contain 
OS, operating system, you'll get it. So how much size that you get for Windows? 30 GB. For Linux, you get 8 GB. 8 or 10 GB, you'll get it. So that is a root volume. If required, can you go and have additional volumes also attached? Yes. Additional volumes, additional volumes you can attach. How much? What is the maximum size that you can have? 16 terabyte. Very good. That is that step. And next is select the security group. Which is the security group that we should be selecting it? Huh? Ah, default SG. So do we go and create a new security groups? No. I said that until we are familiar with don't create it, we'll be using the default security group itself. And then we need to go and add tags. What is a tag? What is a tag? That is purpose. What is a tag? Key value pair. What is that? We need to give the name of the machine, no? Instance. So I'll give name is equal to Linux server or you can give anything. Huh? You can give the name, name of the machine. And next is finally a review. And at the last, again, you need to, at the last, you need to attach PEM file. Yes or no? We need to attach PEM file, no? What is PEM file? Remember? It's a key pair. What is that? Key pair. So this PEM file is a public key or private key? Private key. So do we have any default key? No. So what we need to do is we need to create it or not? Yes. Create it. Create it. Do you need to create every time? One, one PEM file can be used to multiple machines? Yes. So Chiti, these are the seven steps to launch the EC2 instance. Did we learn all these things already? Uh, so that meaning, see, that meaning, are you ready to go and launch the EC2 instance now? That meaning, are we done with the EC2? Uh, congratulations. We are done with EC2 theory. Okay, in and out. In and out, we have learned. You got? So to, to, to make you understand these seven steps, I took these many days. And you know, other people, they don't take these many days. They directly go and jump for the practicals. In the practicals, they'll go and click on launch, launch instance and they'll say, oh, yeah, my amazing machine image. It is a copy of the operating system. Done. One second. For AMI, we took the entire class, correct? For instance types also, we discussed quite a lot. T2 micro, instance type, whether we can change the instance type or not. Do we need to downtime or not? This milli, milli level of, you know, micro level of technical topics also we have learned. Agree? Super. Excellent. <clears throat> so, officially, we are done with uh, the EC2 syllabus, but there is one advanced topic here in EC2. So do you want that advanced topic? Yes, sir. Anyways, we have some time, right? So we'll go and hit that advanced topic. <laughs> okay. So this advanced topic is not free. It is charged. You no need to do it also in the practical. In practically, just a matter of click, checkbox, that's it. If you select check, if you select the checkbox, that of that feature will get created. But let us learn what is that feature about. Hmm? <clears throat> give me a second. Oh, give me a minute.
Okay. So, thank you, Vishal. Thank you. Okay. So, guys, before I talk about this, okay, by the way, the topic that I'm talking about is called Global Accelerator. What is that? In shortcut, we call it as GA. Global Accelerator. So this glo what is this Global Accelerator? Before I talk about this Global Accelerator, I need to talk about we just now we have talked discussed about different types of IP addresses, <laughs> public IP, private IP, and elastic IP. That is completely different. Keep it aside. So basically, we have two types here. We call it as unicast. Why it is so? We call it as unicast IP, and then another one we call it as anycast IP. What are the two IPs we have? Unicast IP and then anycast IP. Unicast and any cast, any cast. <laughs> okay, so unicast meaning here, same cast. <laughs> one server holds one server hold one IP address. Guys, generally, <clears throat> generally, one server will hold one IP address only. No, yes or no? Right, one server will have one IP address. That is unicast, whereas anycast meaning one all servers holds same IP address, same IP address, and the client is routed to the nearest one. So this is called anycast IP. What is that called? Anycast IP. So unicast meaning one server, one IP address. Whereas anycast meaning you have multiple servers, but all servers will have same IP addresses. Right? So I have a client. So see, I'm a client. You are all sitting in front of me. You are all servers. All you guys server has the same IP addresses. So now, so I have these many people here, correct? Now, I want to communicate. I want to tell something. Hey, hello. I want to tell this. Hello. I have here 50 people, for example. And everyone are having the same IP addresses. So that, mean, that meaning now, who is very nearest to me? This Papa is nearest to me. Correct? So now, I'll tell to her. I will be connecting to her because she is the nearest person to me. Right? And can I communicate to her? Hello? Yes, if I communicate to her and she will be able to communicate to others, all hello. If I go there and say hello, you, guys, you, you, you will be responding, right? So because everyone will be having the same IP addresses. That is called any cast IP. That is called any cast IP. Okay, so just keep this in mind and let me tell you what is global accelerator, first of all. So I'll make it very simple. So what is this? Load balancer. We have EC2. This is ELB. EC2. 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 Why my eyes are shining? Okay, so so this is uh, this is in which region? Let's say I put it in Mumbai region today. Which region? Mumbai region. Okay, and now you tell me <clears throat> whenever I hit one application, let's say boom.com, think and answer. Whenever I hit boom.com, which is the first service will hit first in AWS? Which is a service will hit first? 
service i'm saying before load balancer what route 53 what is that route 53 very good so because in the route 50 only no we we put we just create a records right so first we'll hit the route 53 all the requests will hit the route 53 and route 53 will be redirecting to the load balancer yes or no yes now i have there is some person in us and he want to access boom.com this is my boom.com today he is accessing boom.com from us all the pay from us he is accessing it where is my origin all the way is accessing here oops all the way is accessing now he will be using internet only no in order to access it yes or no he will be using internet he will be using internet so if it is using internet he will be having so many hops huh hops that meaning directly the request will go to mumbai no first the request will go to his place from there it will go to some isp from there it will go to some upstream from there it will go to uh, like you know if us no uh, from between some countries are there from there it will jump the request will be going jump hops and hops and hops and then finally it will go and hit our mumbai so as it is taking so many hops that meaning we will have a high latency or low latency obviously we will have a high latency so in order to resolve this in order to make it low latency what is the concept that we have learned cloud front fantastic we have learned cloud front so cloud front has what cdn so us region has the cdn us region has a cdn near to him yes they'll have the cdn so this you this us guy will be connecting to the cdn and from the cdn will be connecting to the Mumbai. My yes or no? Yes. So the CDN is connecting to the Mumbai. So CDN has its own network, no? Content delivery network, correct? So it, it, that is the AWS network, yes or no? Yes, that is the AWS network. It uses, AWS, well, it uses a normal regular internet. No, it will, use, it will not use normal regular internet. It will be using AWS network. So you'll have a low latency or high latency here? Ma, huh? Low latency because it is through the CDN. No, it is through the CDN will have a low latency. Now, I have one customer here. I have one customer. Remember, and this customer has some firewall. And he started shouting, Babu, give me the IP address of your application. Is it possible to give the IP address of our application? That meaning he's asking uh, whose IP address? Load balancer IP address. Is it possible for, you, for us to give? No. So in this type of requirement, there is a feature called global accelerator. What is that? Global accelerator. So AWS has global accelerator. We can set up a global accelerator here in the particular region. And this GA global accelerator will give two static IPs. How many static IPs it give? Uh, two static IP. It will give the two static IP. So this is global accelerator. This global accelerator is completely managed by? Yes, managed by AWS. So this global accelerator will give the two IP addresses. Can I give these two IP addresses here into the customer? Yes, and this global accelerator in turn will be connecting to the our load balancer in Mumbai. And this global accelerator using what you know in the back end? It using a normal internet or AWS internet, AWS network? It using AWS network. And also it uses AWS edge locations in the back end. Guys, it uses AWS edge locations. Now you tell me you'll have a high latency or low latency. Soup per low latency you have it so you got that two you got the ip address issue problem is resolved now right so you have the global you have the gs everywhere with the same ip addresses 
So whenever your application, whenever your customer started accessing boom.com, it will go to the global accelerator. Global accelerator will have the same IP address, multiple locations. Whichever is the nearest location, it will pick it up and it will send it to your Mumbai location. So we'll have a super high availability now. You will have a super high availability and then you have a super, uh, what is it called? Uh, performance also, correct? You'll have a low latency there. So this global accelerator will use, so this global accelerator is also using edge locations in the backend. You can use only plain edge locations, no issues. And if you want to set up, if you want to set up with the static IP addresses, then will you choose which one you choose? Global accelerator you choose. Why two IP addresses for high availability? One goes down, we have another one. Is it clear? This is the additional small topic that you get. Is it clear, everyone? So this global accelerator, you don't need to do anything. It's just a matter of checkbox. If you check it, give the name and it will get created. Super. Any questions still here? Understood? And in our, ah, of course it is billable. Guys, this is billable. This is billable. I think it, it takes almost $18 if I'm not sure, maybe $18. Okay, so one thing here, we discussed about the private IPs, right? I mean, the types of IP addresses. IP address will be assigned to your NIC card, right? Yes or no? IP address will be there assigned to the NIC card. NIC card is nothing but what? Network interface only, no? Every EC2 instance will have a NIC card. Remember, every EC2 instance will have something called ETH0 and ETH1. What are this called? Network interface. What is that? Network interface. Remember, ETH0 is for private IP and ETH1 will be assigned for public IP. Certification question. Remember, how many, ETH, ETH, how many Ethernet devices can have permission for EC2? Two. What are those? ETH0 and ETH1. For every EC2 instance, you have ETH0 and ETH1. So definitely, what type of, which IP address is mandatory? Which IP address is mandatory to EC2 instance? Private IP is mandatory, correct? So that private IP address will be assigned to which device? ETH0. And if you are, can you assign additionally public IP to the EC2 instance? That public IP will be assigned to which device? ETH1. Chide, Pusuk, if you have used ETH1 for again private IP also, private IP, if you are using ETH1 for private IP, another private IP, another private IP, tell me, is it possible to have a public IP? No public IP. Because ETH1 is mentioned as public IP. ETH1 is associated for the public IP. And if you are adding uh, another private IP to the EC2 instance, can you have public IP at all? No. So remember, this will be a certification questions. Okay, ma? Super. Take the screenshots. <laughs> there is a question. Sir, will you teach DevOps as well after this course? No, Babu. So, Ria sir is only for AWS. But generally, students will have this. No, in school also, we have for maths, maths teacher, for science, science teacher. But you want to have a tuition, tuition teacher will can cover everything. Huh? <laughs> Nothing wrong in asking, but no, no, no I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I know there is a huge demand. Just imagine how many batches I might have completed in these so many years, right? Every batch after I completed, they'll ask this question, sir, please teach DevOps, DevOps. If I start teaching DevOps, I think this entire building will not be sufficient. I need to use some GHMC big ground to teach. Huh? 
Uh, okay, so did you took the screenshot? So next second slide. I would say suggestible, Anvish. <laughs> Don't go for DevOps classes now itself. Wait until we finish EC2. After that, you can parallelly go if at all you want. Otherwise, complete the AWS completely. After that, go for the DevOps. Okay, next slide. Yeah, enough. Intermediate level is enough, Akil. Honestly, if you're asking that we need which SAR is best for DevOps, how did you guys land it to me? You attended demo classes, right? And you checked me for two to three days, whether this stupid fellow is teaching correctly or not. And then you have decided, correct? So, I suggest the same thing for any kind of uh, course, DevOps. So go and get the uh, go and sit in the demo classes, listen the demo classes, and if that trainer is the right one for you, you will you will get to know how he is teaching, right? So you have to find out like that. Super. So can you give me the final CC for today? For today, nearly twenty to thirty minutes. Suggest me to join your batch. Thank you, Vinit. I hope that is worthable, huh? Can you give me the final CC for today, please? CC with smile. And guys, from tomorrow, Dabidi Dibide, right? From tomorrow, what? Practicals. So from tomorrow, practicals. And uh, we'll be jumping to the practicals. And then, and I want everyone to complete the practicals on the same day. Okay. Whatever the task that I give tomorrow, you have to complete the same on the next day by your coming to class. Okay. So that is all guys for today. And I'll see you tomorrow with the next EC2 practical. Until then, take care. Bye-bye. Have a nice day and good night.